In relation to how the book should be used, we are hoping, obviously, that it will be a standard text on any uh, college or university course in the interaction between Christianity and contemporary culture, or Christianity and the arts, or religion and culture more generally, because um, we think it can hold its own against plenty of other books that are out there to do with film and popular culture. Um, but in, uh, it has a sp part three, we think, is a particular contribution to the whole discussion about Christianity and the arts and culture. Because part three is the quite, you know, let's be admitted, it's quite a heavy theological section because we are that serious about the importance of popular culture. We want people to wrestle with the theological section that we've included in the book because that's where it gets to. We, want, we would like, ideally, this book to start appearing in doctrine and theology courses, not just in courses about religion and culture or Christianity and culture. We would like people to look at the doctrinal sections that we've got in that third part of the book and working back from what we've got through that interaction between popular music and, and theology uh, to some of the more traditional ways in which theological uh, themes are taken up. We'd like people to have a think about the doctrine of incarnation through our small section on what attention to physicality and the body as that emerges in, in popular music, what that does to our contemporary thinking about incarnation. Um, so I hope that um, quite traditional uh, lecturers and tutors in uh, theology and doctrine will have a, a look at least at part three of the book and then be persuaded to read the first two parts uh, to see the project as a whole because students, I think, contemporary students of theology and religion and culture will benefit hugely from what we're trying to do across the three parts. The very last section of the book is a very simple, short, programmatic postscript because what we wanted to do was challenge people to use the book practically. We've got some concrete suggestions for church, for Christian theological education, for academic life generally and for music fans to think about their music listening in everyday life because we want, and we, but there's, a, there's some imperatives in there because we want the church to resist, for example, its abuse of popular music. Uh, by that we mean uh, the way in which often popular music can simply be plundered for uh, material which already fits neatly into what we as Christians want to say. That's sometimes not um, very respectful of the way in, what, in which music is working or to the people who themselves are writing the music. Um, so we need to be more constructive and practical and creative in the way in the church is we use music and we hope that's one of the challenges of the book. In Christian theological education, particularly thinking of ministerial education or education of those who are in some form of Christian leadership, uh, we want the book to be used, again, creatively and constructively um, so that people don't just say, I will understand popular music in order to understand the context in which we are living. Of course that's true and helpful, but we think the interaction between popular culture uh, and therefore popular music and Christian faith is more dialogical. Um, so in all, there's always a two-way interaction going on, and it's going on for every member of the church that listens to popular music. And so therefore, those in leadership, in the way that they are trained for leadership and the way we are trained for ministry of all kinds, we need to ad address that as part of the training to think about how that interaction happens for people who are members of, of the church.